JBN we keep you informed. An identified man shot and killed in Mobe. The Barnet Street Police has commenced an investigation surrounding the shooting death of an unidentified man. The victim was murdered outside a bar in Montego Bay, St. James, on Wednesday night, September 11. According to reports, about 11.30 p.m., the victim and another man were standing outside Reggae Bar, located at McCarthy Street, when a lone gunman approached them and opened fire, eating the unidentified man multiple times to his upper body. The Barnet Street Police were then summoned to the crime scene. On arrival, the unidentified man was discovered lying in a pool of blood with gunshot wounds to his upper body. His body was removed to the morgue. Three arrested in connection with shooting death of six-year-old. The, the police have arrested three suspects in connection with a gun attack on the weekend in Norwood St. James where a six-month-old baby was killed. The deceased has been identified as Tira Thompson of Hendon, Norwood in the parish. Two teenage boys were also shot and injured during the attack. Commanding Officer of the St. James Police, Vernon Ellis, says progress is being made in the investigation. Reports are that about 9 Saturday night, heavily armed gunmen exited a motor car and used rifles to spray gunshots on people who were gathered in a square in Norwood. The 14 and 16 year old boys were shot and injured. While the gunmen were leaving the area on foot, they opened fire on the house and the baby was hit by bullets which went through the window. The baby and the two boys were taken to the hospital where Tyra was pronounced dead on arrival. Police set up measures to ensure a medical doctor accused of rape unable to flee country. The St. Catherine South Police have put measures in place to prevent the Portmore-based medical doctor accused of raping a 15-year-old girl last month from fleeing the country. The doctor has reportedly been in hiding since the girl's mother reported the alleged incident to the police. Superintendent Rex Swearing, acting head of the St. Catherine South Police, has said all ports of exit are being monitored. Superintendent Swearing said the police are waiting to collect another statement from the child in order to strengthen the case. He was speaking Wednesday night at the monthly meeting of the Portmore Municipal Corporation. It is understood that the girl's mother, who suspected her of being sexually active, took her to the doctor to be examined. It is alleged that during the examination, the doctor sexually assaulted her. According to information received, the doctor was previously charged with sex crimes. In the meantime, Superintendent Swerin denied an allegation from the child's mother that the police alerted the doctor after she gave her report. The mother said she was contacted by the doctor shortly after she filed the criminal complaint at the station on August 28. She said since that call, the family has been living in fear. However, Superintendent Swerin distanced the police from any contact the doctor may have made with the family. At this stage, I'm saying that neither the investigator nor the management of the St. Catherine South Division tipped off the doctor or caused the doctor to call the mother, he said. He noted that the accused was a personal doctor of the child's mother, therefore it is possible that he had access to her contact information. Husband of murdered Manchester teacher charged. The police have now charged Gregory Campbell with the murder of his wife, Caroline Davis Campbell. Mrs. Davis Campbell, a teacher at the Bishop Gibson High School, was fatally shot at her home in Manchester two months ago. Superintendent Wayne Cameron, head of the Manchester Police, said Campbell was charged Thursday afternoon. He is to appear in the Manchester Parish Court today. Mrs. Davis Campbell's husband was taken into custody last week Tuesday. The, the teacher was shot by a gunman who invaded her home in Melrose Mills on July 10. Campbell, who was also at the house, was not injured. Superintendent Cameron noted that Campbell was charged because of inconsistencies in his statements following his wife's death. Man charged for shooting two St. Andrew women. Detectives assigned to the St. Andrew South Police Division have arrested and charged a man following the shooting injury of two women in Payne Avenue in St. Andrew on Thursday, April 25. Charged with illegal possession of firearm and ammunition and shooting with intent is 29-year-old Howard Morrison, otherwise called Howie, of Payne Avenue in the parish. The police report that about 10 a.m., Morrison and neighbors were involved in a dispute when he brandished a firearm and opened gunfire, hitting the woman. He was subsequently arrested and charged. Arrangements are now being made for him to appear in court. 22 charged in Clarendon SOE. 22 people have been charged with various offenses since Prime Minister Andrew Holness declared a state of public emergency SOE in the parish of Clarendon. We continue to maintain our presence in an effort to maintain public order and reduce violent incidents. Deputy Superintendent of Police Dale Garrick, who heads the Constabler's Corporate Communication Unit, said, while adding that since the SOE, there have not yet been any murders in the parish. 
She also noted that 533 traffic tickets had been issued. An additional 33 people were processed and released, and one firearm and 16 rounds of ammunition were recovered. The emergency security measure, which was also implemented in St. Catherine last week, will initially be for 14 days, after which parliamentary approval must be sought for an extension. When the SOEs were declared last week, Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson said the high level of violent crime being experienced in the parishes of Clarendon and St. Catherine since the start of the year is at a scale and nature such that it greatly endangers public safety, hence the reason for the SOE. The Clarendon Division has historically been one of the most violent regions in the country, with a number of gangs engaged in inter- and intra-gang conflicts or the criminal enterprise. Already since the start of 2019, the Clarendon Division has recorded the second highest number of murders at 100, and the St. Catherine South Police Division has seen an increase in murders of 50% over last year's number to currently sit at 91 murders since the beginning of the year, he said. Mystery Payments A witness who took the stand at the Manchester Municipal Corporation fraud trial on Wednesday denied the knowledge of two roadwork projects for which payment vouchers bearing his name exist and told the court that the signatures on the vouchers were not his. However, he admitted doing carpentry work for the local government body for which he was paid. The middle-aged man testified that his services had been retained by the corporation to repair doors, make and install door jams at the Manchester Infirmary. He said he had done work at the infirmary more than once, but it was only on one occasion that he had been assigned to do the job by one of the accused, Sanjay Elliott, former deputy superintendent of the Road and Works Department at the corporation. According to the witness, he was paid by checks for all the jobs he completed for the corporation. He told the court that he had also done work on Elliott's home at Daly's Grove, Knockpatrick, but on that occasion had been employed by someone who was working for Elliott, and the person had paid him in cash. When lead prosecutor Chana Ormsby questioned him about two payment vouchers bearing his name for water delivery and road maintenance done for the corporation, the witness said that he was not aware of those projects. She made several attempts to determine if he was actually paid for the work outlined on the payment vouchers. I don't do road work, he said looking at the voucher for the road maintenance work while the prosecutor probed. He said it was not his signature on the documents. Defense counsel cautioned the prosecutor about her line of questioning, arguing that it could prejudice the accused. Elliot is one of eight accused on trial for the alleged misappropriation of funds from the corporation. All accused are facing charges including forgery, conspiracy to defraud, and obtaining money under false pretense. Ormsby strongly defended her line of questioning to presiding judge Anne-Marie Granger, assuring her that the questions she was asking were relevant to building her case. The witness told the court that he could not recall specifics, such as the exact periods that he had done work for the corporation and how much he had been paid in each instance. Granger, in providing guidance to the prosecutor, said there will be situations in which she does not get the desired responses but will still have to move on. The carpenter, who said he's a far relative of Elliot, ended his testimony yesterday. A police officer from the Major Organized Crime and Anti-Corruption Agency was recalled to the stand. 14 Ratty police stations to receive $200 million fix. Eight contractors received deals yesterday to refurbish 14 police stations across the island in the second phase of the government's solution for the deplorable conditions under which law enforcement personnel currently work. The projects, which include the Kingston Central, Tivoli Gardens, and Almond Town police stations in Kingston, are to take place under the Rebuild Overall and Construct Initiative. Present to sign off on the deals worth more than $195 million at the Ministry of National Security in St. Andrew, where National Security Minister Dr. Horace Jang, Police Commissioner Major General Andrew Anderson, and the eight contractors. The government is spending $5 billion to improve 149 of the 186 police stations island-wide. According to data provided by the National Security Ministry, Five stations have been fitted with improved facilities. The five stations are Spring Hill in Portland, Hayes in Clarendon, Trenchtown and Mountain View in Kingston, and Sandy Bay in Onova. The ministry also said that 25 stations were under refurbishment, with six close to completion. The ministry awaits a decision from the procurement process for another 16 stations. Some stations are infested with rats. They are also leaking roofs and pipes all over, Chang said. I appeal to the contractors to do the work well, said Chang, noting that he would seek to ensure that contracts are paid on time, 
but that there had to be quality work. I have a list of contractors, and if the work is not done properly, I have no apologies. I will ask for the work to be cancelled, the minister warned. Chang explained that a maintenance system would be established so that officers responsible can monitor what is happening. He assured contractors that if they required a top-up in funds, then you can have engineers who can make appropriate recommendations in writing and with logic, implying that there should be no excuse for delays. We cannot treat our officers like this. There is absolutely no reason any policeman should work in a station that is leaking and is without a proper toilet or chair to sit on. We cannot give them basket to carry water. Attrition is high and motivation low because facilities are deplorable. We are correcting that. Trelawney down to one fire truck. The Falmouth Fire Station, the only such facility in Trelawney, which has more than 33 homes and a number of large hotels, is woefully short of resources to effectively respond to emergencies across the entire parish. The state-of-the-art facility, which was rebuilt at a cost of approximately $100 million ahead of the 2007 ICC Cricket World Cup, when Trelawney hosted the opening ceremony, was then equipped with two fire trucks and two ambulances. At the time, the facility was hailed as a model for future construction of fire stations across the island. Twelve years later, it is facing a serious crisis as only one fire truck is operational and both ambulances are out of service. When the fire station was visited recently, the two ambulances were facing the wall instead of the in the normal outward facing position. Once you see the vehicle parked like that, it is an indication that it is out of service. One firefighter explained as he also pointed out some expanding cracks in the building. Deputy Superintendent Patrick Robinson, who heads the Trelawney Fire Brigade, said the situation at the station reached crisis proportion three years ago when they lost one of the fire trucks and started having issues with the two ambulances. Three years ago, one of the trucks was on its way to Kingston for maintenance. It reached Ochoa's and breakdown and is still in need of repairs, Robinson said. The two ambulances breakdown have not been repaired, so we have to depend on the hospital to come to our rescue when we need the service of an ambulance. With the crippling situation, fire trucks from neighboring parishes are often called on to assist with emergencies, especially in the South Trelawney area. Quizzed as to why the required repairs were not done after three years, the Trelawney fire chief was reluctant to provide details. The answers you are seeking will come out at the next monthly meeting of the parish council in my report, said Robinson, who did not mask his displeasure with the current state of affairs. In late May, local government minister Desmond McKenzie announced a $10 million repair package for the fire station. However, the funds are yet to be made available. The scope of repair works were also not disclosed. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.